in a year full of drama on the Bassmaster Elites was the St. Lawrence River, the worst event we've ever seen for drama. That's what we're going to talk about right now. If you like this kind of content, click that like and subscribe button, become part of the team and family, and thank you. Thank you to all the new subscribers. Thank you to all the people that interact on the channel and comment. I really do appreciate it. I try to get to back to everyone, but sometimes there's one or two that I miss and I apologize, but I'll do better. But if you're not a subscriber, click that button, become part of the team. Now I'm going to do a year in review for the elites, but I felt like I needed to do this video because damn, did we have a lot of storylines on the last event of the year for 2024 for the Bassmaster Elite. And it's been building pressure tournament after tournament all year for the elites. And again, we'll go into all that probably in the year in review that I'll do over the next few days. But here in this video, I'm going to give you looks like eight storylines. And I want to know which one was the biggest storyline for you this, this past weekend on the St. Lawrence River for the Bassmaster Elites. And let me just say, they absolutely killed them. I thought with BPT going the, the week before, I thought it might be harder for those guys to catch them. Wrong. Completely wrong. They absolutely smoked fish. We had two guys go over the century mark again. So it just shows how amazing that fishery is up there. But getting back to it, what was the biggest storyline for you this weekend? Was it topic one, JT Tompkins gets disqualified for the whole tournament for failing a polygraph. First and foremost, someone protested him and Bass looked into it. Bass did their due diligence and then gave him a polygraph. Now, obviously JT has said, I didn't do this stuff, but he did fail a polygraph and Bass uses polygraphs to test the anglers. It's their way of doing things or keeping things on a play even playing field. If you don't pass it, they disqualify you. There's lots of people that are like, well, polygraphs don't matter in court. You're right. They matter in bass. That's all that matters. And the anglers sign up for this and know that this is the rules that bass uses. But was that the biggest storyline for you? Number two, the Robert Gee and the Corey Johnston. If you don't know this, Johnston drove into to Gee while he was out there fishing and had lots of comments to make. He went on Mercer's morning mix as he walks through with the, the guys and, and called him names and told him maybe I should find him here and settle this now. And they had arguments out there on the water. And Corey claimed this spot to be his. Now, technically, it, it's everyone's spot. However, there's a little back and forth going on. And also, why did he just out of nowhere show up there? Now, I know that he had fished there years ago and that was his spot and that he won on, but, and he has you know, previous knowledge, but it just, in my opinion, wasn't the right thing to do. The words back and forth, the name calling. I really find it ridiculous when people call each other names, when one person isn't calling you a name, you have to go to that, that place in life. And while I didn't agree with Guy going and finding someone and coming fishing in the same spot, it just felt like Corey was poking the bear calling names. I also didn't even like Mercer calling Guy a minion. I kind of felt like Guy was getting beat up on. But was that the best or the, the storyline you remember most after this weekend? Our third story is Trey McKinney, one rookie of the year. Kid had a great year. And I say kid in the nicest way. I know he's got a lot of baggage that's following him. I know that he had probably had to take a polygraph after day four, which he passed. Um, and that's a great thing. But he had a fantastic year. Finished second in the points, I think, for Angler of the Year. And it was it was pretty damn impressive what he did, did this year. So my number three, and I want to know if this is the topic you'll remember most, Trey McKinney winning Rookie of the Year. My number four topic is Chris Johnson winning Angler of the Year. To be honest, the Johnston brothers are two of the most dominant anglers out there. It makes sense that one of the two was going to win Angler of the Year. When the tournament started, nobody really saw Chris winning Angler of the Year. But he did. And it's unbelievable. Unbelievable angler, unbelievable brother, and couldn't be happier for a great Angler of the Year in Chris Johnson. But is that the topic you're going to remember most? My fifth topic is... Corey Johnson winning another event up there, two-time winner. He and his brother 
are the best smallmouth fishermen on the planet up there. There's no question. These guys know the water better than anyone. They know the spots. They know everything. Next, Rick Clun, calling it quits. Not retiring because he think he's gonna, I think he's going to fish some opens, but decided this is his last season on the leads. Rick Clun is definitely on that Mount Rushmore of professional bass fishing anglers. He is one of the goats. He is a fan favorite, and he is just magnificent. But is Rick retiring or calling it quits the topic you're going to remember most? I think there are very few people in the industry that have would have anything to say about this next one. But Mark Zona leaving Bass is huge, and that's my seventh topic. Probably one that gets not as much acknowledgement as it deserves. Mark Zona is one of the greatest people on earth. He is honest and genuine, and while there's probably people that don't like him, he has been one of the best people I've ever known on Bass. I've interviewed him, I don't even know how many times. Always has some sort of great story. He's a great storyteller. He knows the anglers. He knows how to fish. He is one of the greatest people out there, especially as an angler. But is the Mark Zona leaving one of the topics, the biggest topic from this past weekend. And last but not least, all nine rookies made it to the Bassmaster Classic. Huge accomplishment. Is that the biggest topic of this of the weekend? So tell me in the comments below. Remember, take a kid fishing, get your fish on. I'll talk to you soon. Cheers.